and go writing daily it's another day so we have another writing daily episode this is Devin Galladay I am your host and every day we talk about some sort of a writerly thing to help you write more to write better to put yourself out there more in a more bold ridiculous absurd way um, and uh, for those who don't know my name is Devin Galladay I am the editor-in-chief of uh, In the No Traveler and the author of the forthcoming memoir, 10,000 Miles with My Dead Father's Ashes. Uh, lots is going on, so I'm really busy. I'm a few minutes late today. Normally I try to shoot for one o'clock and do a live thing, and I'm just trying to catch up. The marketing part is kicking in high gear, but we're not gonna talk about that. Part of the reason why I'm running a little bit late is I had a, a good buddy of mine call me up, and we, we frequently talk about life, but we frequently talk about writing as well. And he was, he was talking about how, uh, you know, when things are not centered in life, uh, things tend to fall apart. Uh, and one of the first things to go is when that happens is uh, his, his, uh, his, his writing, the quality of his writing, his consistency in writing. And so I guess what I wanted to talk about today is sort of, oh, and before we do that, of course, as always, please kind of ask questions like the like box, do all the kinds of things that we do that we have here. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So one of my issues, and I think this is probably a lot of people's issues, is that my writing tends to be fragile. In other words, if, if I'm in a really great place and, um, you know, things are kind of like looking good in my world, I, I tend to be very much more open to writing consistently. In other words, uh, you know, showing up every day at 11 and doing the right things. Uh, and then other days, it's really much more difficult. And so what's the difference? The difference is, and so anyway, the way I describe this in the, uh, in the, the uh, in whatever this is, the description of this episode, is that uh, I said that I'm going to get a little bit wackadoodle. Another way to describe that is a little bit more woo-woo, meaning there's a practical element to writing, right? It's very logical. You sit down in a chair or you sit on the floor or however you're going to do it, and you sit down and you start writing. You sit down and you start telling your story or you write your paragraphs or you, you know, noodle around over words and you sit with your word finder and find the best way to describe things, right? That's part of what we do as writers. But sometimes when it becomes increasingly difficult to do that thing, to sit down and really start getting at your writing, then it might be a time to start really exploring, well, is there something else that is going on in your world that is making writing more challenging or, you know, if you're feeling more insecure? So here's a couple of things that I tend to do when, when those kinds of things happen. This is especially helpful when you're on a deadline and you just have to get the words out on the page. So if this is happening to you, uh, some of the best advice that I can suggest is, is that, you know, uh, the way it was described to me, and I'm going to extrapolate on it, is messy bed, messy head. And what you don't want is a messy head. You want to be able to focus on the things that you need to do. And the messy, the messy head analogy is kind of a twofold thing. One, messy bed is you don't make your bed. Right. I mean, this may sound kind of almost ridiculous. What do you mean? I can't write a paragraph because my bed, I didn't make my bed today. Yeah, kind of. Actually, if things are out of place in your surrounding, um, it's frequently that we are less likely to be focusing on the kinds of things that we should. And this is, again, this is more of a woo-woo sort of topic. We're talking about our spiritual uh, aesthetics, if you will, for lack of a better description. If the thing, if your surroundings are not clean, uh, things are in disarray and things are all over, there's piles of paper everywhere you look, you may not be in an environment that is conducive to allowing your creativity to flow in the best possible way. So if you haven't tried it, and by the way, listen, these are things that you can just try. Like one thing that I tend to do is I make my bed every single morning. Uh, in part so I don't crawl back in it 
but in part, so I start developing like an aesthetic around me that is conducive to my own creativity. So when the house is a mess or my writing space is a complete mess or things aren't where they're supposed to be, I kind of feel it on some level. And so when that happens, I want to make sure that I kind of change that tide. So do I make my bed? Totally. Do I do the dishes? Absolutely. Do I do all the kinds of things? Hey, Ron, good to see you. Uh, I do the kinds of things that I need to do in order to make sure that my, my, my environment is in order. If I'm incapable of doing that, I frequently will go to places like the library or a Starbucks because that place is going to be orderly. It's going to be, you know, uh, like I'm getting away from sort of my my place of of confusion to get a little bit more orderly. And one thing that is great about libraries, A, I'm surrounded by books, so I love that all the time, and I'm an avid reader uh, and, an, and an obsessive compulsive book buyer. So being in a library doesn't necessarily uh, soothe the buying part, but it does put me in a position where A, I'm surrounding, I'm surrounding myself more often than not by people who are in the middle of their studiousness. And I like that. It's, it's kind of like, a, it's almost like a, a visual affirmation of getting down and getting to work. And it's a great place that I use. And also Starbucks, because every yutz in North America is sitting in Starbucks writing their great book. And I want to be part of that thing. So while I'm not a huge fan of Starbucks per se, I am a huge fan of being around the studiousness uh, of kind of quiet study, inner reflection. That's the way I kind of tend to look at it. And if I want to be at home or I'm, I have the opportunity or the luxury to be at home, I tend to want to make sure that I do my dishes. I want to make sure that I've made my bed. I want to make sure that in general things are sort of like tidy enough where I don't have to be looking at the mess I've created over a few days beforehand. So, uh, uh, you know, that's on the one hand. And so the other element to this messy head, messy bed is that how do we unmess our heads? Frequently, uh, I also tend to have uh, like groups of friends that I get together with regularly. So because writing is a very solitary business, right? Unless you're actually, you know, doing some sort of a, a work together or you're co-writing a book or you're co-writing an article, it's kind of a very solitary thing. Like this small room that I'm sitting in here right now, I can be in here all day long, not talk to a soul, and I can do it day after day. That is a testament to my willingness to work, but to a greater extent that I need to have human beings, even if I'm not you know, co-writing something. It's important for me to have some kind of spiritual outlet. And sometimes that is just being in an environment where I'm like going to get a hug, hello, and a hug, goodbye, where I'm going to be able to, like, if I'm not feeling well, I get to talk it out. Or better yet, if somebody else isn't having a great day, um, I get to hear about what their day is. So I don't have to worry about me and my deep many thoughts. Because Sitting in a small dark room working on my writing is a great thing, but working in a small dark room by myself day in and day out is not a good thing for my writing. So I have to make sure that even while I'm in the midst of some sort of a deadline or some sort of a crunch or I'm finishing a scene and I can get all caught up in that thing, I make sure that I get like sunlight on my face. I make sure that I get outside. I make sure that I'm in communication with other human beings. Isolation, I think, in, in a general thing is a terrible idea for like us as individuals and, and for humanity. So when we get when we talk about messy bed me, or yeah, messy bed, messy head, think of the inside of your brain. Um, as being a place that needs, you know, you need to pull the sheets up and smooth everything and give yourself an opportunity. I don't know if that's too woo-woo or not. I can get really woo-woo, and we may be doing that in the future. I actually spoke to a friend of mine who put out uh, a book on uh, actually occultism, so that would be like woo-woo, extreme, badass, crazy town. But I, I think I'm going to get here on get her on here to talk about writing and, and sort of her writing topics, which are really out there and a lot of fun. So as always, 
please, if you like what we're doing, make sure that you like devingalladay.com. Uh, join us. You're going to get all kinds of discounts. We're working on freebies and giveaways uh, this week. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to set up, but we're totally doing it. So I want to set you guys up. So, you know, get some free books, get some, a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a free giveaway for everybody who signs up as well on writing, uh, sort of like my free giveaway to you. That's going to be happening later this week. So go to devingalladay.com and get some free stuff and perhaps the chance to win all kinds of cool other things that are all in the process of happening right now. And of course, Oh my God, what was that about? You can find me on Twitter and you can find me in a whole variety of other places. So do check me out and uh, let's talk about writing daily every single day. Thanks so much for joining me and I will talk to you guys soon.